you bleed black and gold? Is gritty your spirit animal? Does the sound of F1 engine make your heart race? Lend us an ear when we will share the exhilaration of Flyers hockey, the excitement of Steelers football, the nail-biting finishes of F1, and the pride when we yell, we are Penn State. Welcome to the Steel Flyers podcast, the strangest combination of sports fandoms since pineapple was put on pizza. Welcome to the Steel Flyers YouTube channel. How you guys doing today? We got a special for you tonight lined up. We got the special player profile on the 2020 Pittsburgh Steelers second round draft pick, Chase Claypool. How about that for you? Uh, today or Wednesday, he signed his uh, rookie deal. So that's going to be a four year uh, hitch for him. Uh, that's going to carry a $1.2 million uh, contract for him. So that's really good to have him in the fold. Congratulations to Chase. Uh, we're glad to have you uh, in with the Steelers, so you can't go wrong with that. Um, I think he's uh, has uh, some pretty good potential. Um, on this video today, we're going to be breaking down just uh, that particular potential, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers 2020 draft. Um, this is kind of a pre-camp preview of the 2020 class uh, because we got camp coming up here real soon. Uh, we're T-minus a few days away. Uh, I believe we're going to be starting July 28th, so this uh, gives us a couple days here to uh, uh, get everybody rounded up and get everybody rolling. Uh, so this uh, video, we're going to be talking about uh, the six foot four. 230 pounder from Notre Dame, our second round draft pick. Um, he was 49th overall picked uh, for us. So I mean, uh, that, that's pretty good. That says that says a lot about him. This was also a pretty uh, deep wide receiver draft. So to have him go into the second round, I think was a pretty good, pretty good assessment uh, for for Kevin Gilbride and, and Mike Tomlin, and and that that puts it out there pretty good. Um, he's six four. He's he's got a good thick body, two hundred and thirty pounds. Um, he has he's that prototypical big receiver. Um, so he has that size and he has length. Um, he also has really good body control too. So he's he's able to take those shots when he makes those catches over the middle. And, and I'll tell you what, we, we definitely need help in that department for sure. Um, and he also presents a really big target for Ben. You know, uh, at six four, um, being able to. Uh, uh, be tall enough to you know make he wins a lot of the 50 50 balls and that's a good thing too you know what i mean um, you definitely need to have something like that um, especially if you're going to be trying to catch balls over the middle you know what i mean here's the other really awesome thing about chase is that he's got a 40 time at the combine that he did uh this past year uh four four two so that's somebody that's got that gear that could just shift it into overdrive and say, light put the top out over the top on the defenses. So, okay, I'm down with that. Um, anybody 6'4", 230 pounds that can run uh, the 40 in 4'4", in four, four, all right, uh, sign me up for some of that. Um, you know, uh, and, and, you know, that's the other thing, too. Um, I think he's got, I don't think he's just that one-trick pony. You look at a lot of the highlights that he had. Um, over his uh, senior season, and uh, I mean, he did he did pull in uh, 13 touchdowns uh, in 13 games with just over a thousand yards um, with 66 snags. So that that's pretty good for a senior season uh, for somebody that was um, able to um, not just be you know uh, can can run those um, out and ups you know and those post routes. Well, that, that's great you know, but. Can you do those crossing routes over the middle? Can you do those um, little out and ups? Can you do the fade routes? You know what I mean? And so uh, if you look at some of that kind of stuff, that's, that's some of the things that he does that he brings to the table is that he can also um, do more of the uh, receiver tree than just the, the, the speed down the sideline and catch the ball over the shoulder, which is another really good thing to be able to do. Um, and, you know, I'm not taking away from somebody that can do that, too. But he gives you more options than just that, you know. And, and I think that's how to um, – that's a really good way to um, keep things um, – keep the defenses guessing, you know, keep them rolling, keep them trying to see how things are going, you know what I'm saying. So it's 
it, it, it's a nice problem to have, that's for sure. And for a rookie coming in like that, um, that's another really good thing too. I agree with uh, uh, with the Steelers on that on that second round draft pick for 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 Chase Claypool. Uh, you look at the highlights that he did um, at Notre Dame, and and he was that kind of go to receiver. Uh, um, for them, and, and was was worked into their game plan very well. I mean, thirteen touchdowns in thirteen games—that that's a touchdown a game average. So I'll, I'll take that production. Um, he had just over a uh, thousand yards. He had, it was like a thousand and seventy-three or something crazy like that. But in thirteen games in college, up against some pretty stiff competition. Um, let's face it, Notre Dame had a pretty uh, difficult um, um, schedule based off of, uh, uh, you know, their, uh, uh, the, the way they finished out and the, how, how they ended up in the whole college football rankings and things like that. They, they had some pretty stiff competition over, the, over, that, year, over that season. And so Chase Claypool, pretty, pretty, good, uh, pretty good production. Um, so here comes the thing now. Um, he he does uh, uh, he does present a good target for Ben, and as we've been able to see so far, it looks like Ben's ahead of schedule. Looks like he's going to start camp with no issues, um, so that's great. Um, that means that everybody's going to potentially get passes thrown to them. You know, so um, the the receiver room now has suddenly become rather crowded, um, especially in, in in Pittsburgh too. Uh, you know what I mean? And so that that's what kind of is. Um, Okay, uh, um, Pittsburgh has historically been known to draft very well for wide receivers. Uh, there's a certain uh, player that we're not going to mention any names, but a uh, certain player, number 84, comes to mind. Um, late round draft pick, um, turned out to be a pretty good receiver. Mike Wallace turned out to be a really good receiver. Heinz Ward turned out to be a really good receiver. Uh, so, historically, we've done really well in drafting. Uh, uh, wide receivers, and I and I'll tell you what I, I think um, uh, with that crowded uh, wide receiver room, um, we got James Washington coming up, and 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 I think he's due for a breakout year. Um, Dante Johnson also uh, potentially could be in for a breakout year, and then you sprinkle in a little bit of Barry Switzer, you know what I mean, and 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 then of course you got Juju. So it it suddenly gets to be well, man. That's that's a lot of guys, and we still we haven't mentioned Chase at all. And to be honest with you, I don't think he's going to be the guy that's going to be back there shagging punts or doing any of the kick returning. Um, I think that's going to be reserved for uh, potentially the running back that we drafted, which uh, we might get into that later. Uh, on another uh, quick little video about that, so stay tuned for that. Um, and then, uh, uh, or we might have Barry Switzer or Ryan Switzer back there. I'm sorry, uh, back there shagging the the punts and 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 the uh, uh, kick returns. So I don't have a problem with him back there. He's he's the more veteran guy. I like I like him back there doing that. I've I've watched him do that very well for the last uh, season or two for us, and I like him back there. And I have good good faith in in his judgment. Uh, when he's running the stuff out, you know what I mean? So what does that mean for Chase Claypool? Well, um, hmm, that's going to be tough for him to, I think, crack the lineup for this year. Uh, depending on what we do with Juju um, at the end of the year, because he's up uh, for contract at the end of this year, so that all depends. Um, so that's going to be an interesting kind of thing here in the off season, uh for the Steelers and how we're going to go forward. Um, it also is going to depend on the kind of year that Juju has as well, too. So will Chase have a, an opportunity to crack the, uh, the lineup? Hmm. I'll tell you what. Uh, the, there's one good way that he could uh, definitely crack the lineup, and that would be special teams. And if he can be a, a gunner or a, a guy that, you know, can excel at special teams, um, then that gets him dressed. That gets him on the field. That gets him practicing. Um, and so... I got no problems with that. Got no problems with that on, on special teams. If he that if that's a way for him to make the ro that's the only way I think he's going to make the roster this year. If not, then he would be a really good practice squad candidate. 
uh, because they're not going to be able to bring uh, all 90 players this year for camp like they normally are allowed to. So they're only going to be allowed to bring 80 uh, into camp this year. And also, uh, no preseason games uh, have been uh, decided for uh, this coming uh, football season. So there will be no preseason games, and we won't see any games at all until uh, till we go into the regular season. So that's how that's going to work, I guess. Um, but like I said, uh, I don't think that uh, I don't think it's going to be this, this. I don't think this is going to be the year for Chase uh, to be on the roster per se. Um, I think he's going to be a a good. Um, he's either going to go special teams or he'll or he'll do. Uh, uh, or he'll be on the practice squad, you know what I mean? So I don't think, just because of the amount of talent and the amount of guys in the room already, uh, unless he has a, and even then, you know, because we're talking about a rookie, we're talking about no preseason games, so we're not going to see him at game speed, so there's not going to be any tape on him. Um, so that's... It's going to be tough for him to crack the lineup, I think, this year. But um, if we get into a normal situation for next year, I think we'll be good. Um, he might be able to crack the lineup next year, depending on what happens with Juju and how this year shakes up and or shakes down. And you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But overall, I think uh, Pittsburgh Steelers get get an A minus. Uh, for picking uh, Chase Claypool uh, in the second round of this year's um, NFL uh, 2020 draft. So um, I, I, I think that he's he's a good player. He's got good size. He's got good speed. And I think he'll be a good player come in the future. Okay. And, and I, I don't have a problem with saying that he's a good practice squad player. Um, but... Unless he wants to be on the special teams this year, I think that's the only way he's going to crack the lineup. And with the known history of the Steelers making really good selections of wide receiver, I have no doubt that Chase Claypool will be a pretty darn, pretty darn good player uh, in the coming years in the black and gold. So there you have it. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit the like. Please let me know how you think about this. This was the Steel Flyers video cast on the player profile Chase Claypool. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Steelers, brother.